Hello everybody, uh, I'm back again with my ongoing project of uh, creating uh, the uh, alternative history wargaming, World War II wargaming in the Eastern Front between the Russians and the Germans. Uh, I sent out a post a little while ago, about a week ago, uh, that I was going to have uh, posted my, uh, my uh, 668th anti-tank detachment. I actually got that completed the, today or this morning. Right in front of me is the numbering system. I don't know if you can see it very well. I'm kind of trying to keep the... That's some of them. I've already cut off and took one of them. This is one of the tanks. These are anti-tank assault guns. Uh, there's a numbering system on it. I did half of them. I did a total of 50 of them for the whole detachment. Uh, I'm going to pan out and show you the whole, all of them. You can see them. And that's all of them right there. Uh, and I did uh, two color schemes. I did the standard German gray version and then I camouflaged them. That's uh, the one reason I've been doing a lot of them in the standard German gray was that was a pretty common uh, practice throughout the war. Uh, and you know they camouflage later on. I'm kind of sticking with that just for the just for the sake of simplicity. It's easier to do them that way. It takes a while to camouflage the tanks, so I do some, but I don't do all of them. Uh, and I'm doing it on the precept set. Probably some units did camouflage the tanks and assault vehicles, assault guns, and tank destroyers, and other units probably didn't as much. So, anyways, that's kind of why I did it that way. If you can see those. I'm just going to get you all these. These are actually the uh, Stumpans of 48 uh, chassis uh, with the extra. And I take, took it, and I don't know if you remember my video earlier of my artillery where I had the, the, Paul, the uh, Paul 600 high-low gun, anti-tank gun, and that's essentially what this is. So I shortened it. It would have actually theoretically been able to be mounted on one of the, on the Panzer chassis due to that. It's, it was a smaller uh, gun and it could uh, fit into a fixed superstructure which would be this part right here on the tank. Let me show you one more of the gray. It's a little easier to see while I'm filming it. As you can see it would have fit into the superstructure. And so that's what I did with that. Anyways, I've got that done. Out here a little bit and give you an overall view of them, what they look like from the front. There they are. Also, I'm working currently on, and I'm going to produce about a hundred of them, a little bit smaller, slightly smaller version of the E15 Jag Panzer. And this is kind of, I've already got the uh, superstructure developed or made essentially. That's all the detail. Can you, you can see that? Put that down here. Uh, it'll s probably it'll be set about the same height as the other one. It'll just be a little bit smaller. Uh, it might fall into the the category of an E5, which was a, a small light reconnaissance tank uh, that the Germans was working that the German army was working on towards the end of World War II. The E series, which is a uh, stands for standardized experimental. That's kind of what I'm basing a lot of my tank chassis on. If it would have, if the Germans would have kept on with it, what the what if, what if they would have developed it? So that's kind of where it's at. This is the the one where you've seen in my earlier videos where I've made quite a few of those. I have several hundred of those right now. I'm only going to make about a hundred of these. They're going to be more for the uh, for the reconnaissance units, uh, and I'm working right now on developing the the wheel system for it. You can see, have that there. Kind of give you an idea how I do that. I kind of lay it out and then I kind of mess around with it to develop the track system. You can see that. Uh, there's some right here that I'm more currently working on. I'm only doing a set of 20 today. I haven't had a lot of time to uh, get down here uh, today other than when I finished up in my uh, 668 anti-tank detachment earlier this morning. Uh, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to uh, be working on those, and I'm going to start working on my uh, E15 tank, which I don't think I've showed you guys. 
which I will do so now. I'm going to walk over here a little bit. It's kind of on the other side of the room where it's dark, so I'm not going to... I'm going to grab it and bring it back over to the light so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, here's the E15. Uh, this is a little different. Uh, this is a prototype, the first original model I made. Uh, I kind of see it there better under the lights. It has a rotating turret, as you can see. So that's, that's, uh, that's the front of it. As you can see right here, it has a machine gun, 7.6 mm machine gun. And then it has the standard, uh, you know, the main armament gun, the, the uh, copulas back here in the back. It has an elongated turret, kind of longer. The Germans, were, towards the end of the war, were developing those turrets instead of the more squat angular turret, turrets they had at the beginning of the war with the Panzers 2s, uh, 3s, and 4s. Uh, in the, the beam for the longer tur uh, turret was that the gun breech would be able to recoil back into it. So that was kind of that. This is one thing I was doing. I was kind of cutting out the tracks, if you can see along there, to give a little more detail. I don't know if I'm going to do that with all of them because that does take time. But I just kind of do, when I do the first prototype, you can see the here. You can see the back of it a little bit, the detail underneath of it. Uh, I like to add the detail, obviously, to give it a little more, you know, make it more realistic and make it fun, fun when you're playing the game. But it takes time to add all the details, so I try to simplify and add the, the bare minimum. Uh, there's a little door hatch back there, as you can see. A little hatch. I, add, I, I put as much detail as I can into it to make it fun. Anyways, I'm starting these. I uh, am going to produce about, so, uh, right now I have about, 400 of them ready to be assembled. I'm getting all the different components like the turret and the chassis and the tracks, all that. My next video will be, I'll show that how I'm going to do that. Uh, anyways, I'm going to cut this short and then I'm going to get back to working on some more. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy this video uh, and I'll uh, keep you guys posted on more stuff. One more little quick pan out of the, give you guys an idea of that. Okay, I guess that'll be all. I'll talk to you guys later.